I suppose I'm starting the nine. Oh, well, I would assume so, Pete. Yes, sir. Oh, you, um, you've set yourself a high bar from last week. I'm just going to put that out there. I know, away. I know. I've been actually panicking about it all week, but um, I'm not. I'm not going to worry about it. To be honest with you, you can't be funny every week. Some would argue you can't be funny, um, but um, I was having a chat with one of our subscribers from North Korea the other day. I, I didn't know we had a subscriber in North Korea. How's it over there for him? He says he can't complain. You see, this this is the uncomfortable silence because because that wasn't really that funny compared to last week's joke, which no. was very off colour. I'm just going to say that we have a lady in the room today, and, and that was off colour humour. I, I have to say, you know, I've been I've been trying to find something of that level, but the trouble is, it does feel it does feel like you have to go off colour in order to get there, and I don't want to do that. You know, I do have a joke about a zoo. But I, I, I think you just need to stop. So you, you've you've basically, you know, people in North Korea, that, that's that's not something to make a joke out of, Pete. I, I think you might offend people. True. I, I think we've I'm, got, we, we stand a I'm strong sorry. chance of offending people I'm this sorry. week anyway. Yeah, because, we probably do. Uh, I'm sure unless you're, you're not watching the news or interested in Apple, then you will know about Apple's uh, plans to scan iPhones for child abuse imagery. So we are going to talk about that. Um, before we do, though, um, just cover off a couple of comments from last week's podcast, maybe. Yeah, that would be good, wouldn't it? Hmm. Uh, so, um, yeah. Did um, we have any comments from last week's podcast? We had quite a few. We have quite a few. And um, I don't know, just randomly, someone says, I miss the Pete's Eats. Uh, I admit, I miss that. I would like to bring that back oh. with um, the chili Marmite that I've it, acquired. Well, first of all, I can't have Marmite. For various reasons, and it's not it's not coming back anytime soon. So, uh -huh. you know, it was one thing doing it at home, but doing it in the studio is a. a that's probably when when we think about our new format for the podcast that we're we're considering that maybe bring it back then. But I, I'll need more than one just just one comment, and I'll need a lot of suggestions layered up in order for that. So, okay, and um, we certainly whilst we're recording the podcast at ten a.m. in the morning, which is what we currently do, I won't be having. Dave's whiskey, either. Dave's so, drink. Yeah. yeah. Um, I noticed that uh, Daisy in the Rain enjoyed our podcast so much last week, she watched it twice, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. That's really yeah. appreciated. I, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm going to guess that she probably won't, won't watch this one twice. <laughs> no, probably not. I don't want to watch it. I don't even want to do it, but there we go. Um, uh, someone liked your polo shirt so much that I noticed you're wearing it again this week. I, I'll tell you why I'm wearing it again, Pete. It's because I have three of these polo shirts and the other two are grey. And wearing grey against the grey... Well, mind you, you've come in wearing grey against the grey background. We'll have the whole floating head thing again, won't we? Yeah. Um, I, I, I always used to wear, of course, the, the nice shirt. And dare I say, I even broke out the cufflinks occasionally. Um, but I, f I feel like we need to go a little bit more casual. Yeah. So well, I'm, I'm, I'm just rocking the T-shirt. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Sunday Racer said, what's constant geekery's return policy? I need to return Pete. I think he may be faulty. You've been faulty for a long time and you're yeah. well out of warranty, Pete. No, I, I, you, <laughs> in fact, you're so far out of warranty. You, can, you couldn't even remember what it is that we wanted to talk about this week. Because no. in, in last week's podcast, what we said was we were going to cover MagSafe and Apple Watch. Uh, well, we both decided Apple Watch will hold off on that because there'll probably be a new one out next month. And then we can talk about it then. Um, and MagSafe, you couldn't remember what it is that you wanted to say about it. <laughs> I couldn't. I remember that I wanted to talk about Mag MagSafe because, you know, magnets are amazing. And being mm. able to plop them on something and things to happen when you plop them on them is really exciting. But that's as far as my memory goes. Okay. And I just want to object Sorry. to, to the Sorry, use of thanks. the word plop on the podcast. So I'm just, <laughs> just going to put that out. Um, I like plop. Uh, what we are going to cover on the show today, we've got uh, just news. We've obviously got the, the rumour mill. We're going to talk about vaporware as well, um, because that's something that just seems to be massively on the increase. Um, let's start with a, a little bit of news, first of all. I noticed uh, a tweet saying that Firefox has lost 46 million users in the last three years. Do you know, I was, I was really shocked by that. Do you know why? Mm. I didn't know that they had 46 million to lose. That's harsh. I think they were close to 200. So it, it's 200 a, users. 
million. Oh, okay. 200 million. Right, okay. Um, I don't think this has got anything to do with Firefox. I I think it, what it has everything to do with is that uh, the the browsers that get included with your operating system have got so much better. Safari has got a lot better. Uh, Edge has got Edge a is lot better. Good. Yeah, and uh, and they provide a lot of the features that Firefox kind of introduced, and the reason why everyone used it. Um, and now a lot of people seem to use Chrome rather than Firefox. Well, I was just about to say there is one feature that only one browser has, which is why I use it, which is the propensity to wind up Dave, which is running Chrome. You hate it, don't you? So I, I, I deliberately no, I, run Chrome on my, my MacBook. It's not that I hate it. I just don't understand why they can't fix all of the memory leaks. Um, it is a memory hog, and there's no reason for it. I have a lot of memory leaks. Mm. I don't think they're going to be fixed anytime soon. Plus, of course, Google is watching you when you're, when you're using Chrome. Yeah, I have noticed that. That's probably probably ties into the vaporware that we're going to come on to later, or maybe not. I don't know. Mm. Don't know. Anyway, bad news for Firefox. I have to say Firefox is still a great browser. Um, I always have it installed on my machine, but I, it's my reserve browser. Mm. So on Windows, I will use Edge. On Mac, I use Safari, and Firefox is my backup browser. Yeah, and you know, I joke about the number of users, but I, I was an uh, ardent Firefox user for many, many years, for quite an early adopter of it as well. Because mm -hmm. I think it, originally it came out of Netscape, didn't it? Because uh, it was a Mozilla thing which was then from Netscape. I, I'm pretty sure that's that's why I went with it. I'm not like, sure. I'm not like sure. Netscape. I remember it wasn't called Firefox when it was launched. But can you remember what it was called? I'm not sure I can either. I think it was Firebird. Someone will correct us in the thought, comments. Wasn't that the email client? That no, was Thunderbird. Thunderbird. I was think it? I think the browser was called Firebird because I, I seem to remember an icon with a bird and they got a cease and desist from somebody who has that trademark, so they yeah. changed it to Firefox. Was but, it? Yeah, okay. So I did actually use it in the early days of it being something else other than Firefox. So I, I have a bit of an affinity to it, and I, I'm sorry for them that they're losing those users. I'm not sure how they can get them back either. <coughs> um, and this is one of the problems that as operating systems you know, grow and get better, they, Microsoft and Apple will incorporate functions and... And, and to be fair, they've got to because so much of the technology we use now is web-based. So you need to embed browsers you need into your apps and into your iOS, uh, sorry, into your operating system, into your frameworks. Um, and it makes sense to do that with, with something that's going to be used in the operating system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, changing the subject slightly, if uh, you were following our SSD coverage of the, the M1, I've I have put up a final thoughts video on that. That's on the main channel. So it's youtube.com slash constant geekery. Um, I don't think there's any point in in worrying about that subject anymore. No. Uh, there are no massive uh, numbers of Macs dying because their SSDs are, are falling over. It's just not happening as we expected and as we predicted. So, uh, yeah, have a look on the main channel. Uh, if you want to watch the podcast, uh, if you're currently listening on Spotify or iTunes or whatever, um, then uh, it's youtube.com forward slash The Constant Geekery Podcast. And we're, we're inching closer to the 1,000 subscriber mark yeah, on our podcast channel. 936 as it stands right now, I yeah, think. We pick up a few more every week, so we're, we'll get there. Yeah. Um, and a bit of a milestone for the main channel as well, went over 25,000 subs. So... Thank you, everybody. Yeah, if you are subbing to the main channel, so that's great. Um, so let's get on to our, our main topic. So Apple has been in the news because they've announced these plans that they're going to scan iPhones for child abuse imagery, or CSAM, as it's known. Um, and this has been quite a polarizing thing. And what I've noticed is the reactions of people tend to kind of, well, they are very polarized. Uh, some people are appalled by the what they think is an intrusion into their privacy. Um, and whereas others think this is an amazing move um, to protect children. Um, and then you've got that kind of subgroup who will say anybody who doesn't think it's an amazing move is a child molester. Yeah. And so we're fairly confident that no matter how careful we are to present this topic, we'll probably upset somebody. And that's not our intention. No. So um, let's just be clear about this right from the, from the outset. Uh, people who uh, abuse children, uh, make images of it, 
and anybody who shares or views those images does not deserve any freedoms. That's our our viewpoint, and I think that probably ties up with every sane person out there. Mm. Uh, we don't want to make this conversation about child abuse. It's an awful thing. Uh, we should do everything we can to fix that. Um, but what we want to talk about here is uh, what Apple's doing from a, a privacy point of view, from a technological point of view, uh, and to, to just kind of talk about those aspects of the topic rather than the focus in on the, the, the nature of child abuse. That's not really what we, we want to talk about on the podcast. No, no, so it's, it's, a, it's a horrible thing and mm. completely echo what you've just said there. So let's present a couple of arguments. And now these are not our own opinions at all. What we're, trying, we're, we're going to try and do in the podcast is just um, present some, some opinions that people have expressed and see what we think about those and, and see if we can answer those. So um, this, uh, this intrusion into what people think is an intrusion into their private device. Um, some people would say, uh, what right does Apple have to scan images on my iPhone? And I do get that argument. I was trying to think of an analogy, and I, I think... Right, the developer that built your house, you've you got a fairly recent house, right? Yeah. yeah. Does he get to, or she, get to come round and search through your possessions, searching for illegal materials? No. On the basis that some people do have material, illegal materials, therefore they're going to search every place to look for those things. Yeah. Not being a law enforcement officer and not having a warrant or probable cause. No, that... That just wouldn't fly, would it? No, no one would would ever accept that. And yet, is that not what Apple is doing? Uh, yes, they are. Um, and when you use that analogy, you know, it, it it brings into focus the absurdity of someone doing that in in say other walks of life. But the counter argument to that is to say, well, you know, businesses the size of Apple and with the the scope that Apple have, they have almost a, a moral responsibility. Some would argue hmm. um, to to tackle this this particular challenge. Yeah, I, I think that's um, that's an interesting counter argument there as well. And I think there are differences as well between the analogy that I put forward. That that puts everything in very simplistic terms. But it's this is what happens. You know, you 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 get the announcement, people react immediately to it on Twitter, and they. They don't go and do the research first before they, they make these kind of comments and analogies. So let's talk about what Apple is actually doing. So this affects phones in the US at the moment, but not anywhere else. Although, as far as I'm aware, there are plans to roll this out globally. Yeah. So what Apple is going to do is um, take a, uh, a set of known CSAM images and then they create hashes from those images. So those images are, are unique, and then you can create, using a, an algorithm, you can create a number or a reference. A it hash. basically is unique, uniquely references that image. Yeah. So they, and, and it's not just unique to images, is it? You can, that's a, as a common um, developer um, a, approach, yeah, approach yeah. to, to identify and match files to see if there's differences between two types of files. That's it. So if you've got two identical images, you run the identical formula on it, then you should end up with the identical hash. That's that's the principle. Yeah. So then what happens is those hashes are all on your iPhone from the next operating system, so that's 15. They'll all be on your iPhone, and when you have a photo or you take a photo, what will happen is it will uh, compare the hash against its database of known CSAM images. If it finds a match, then it will uh, apply a what it calls a voucher to it, but it, it flags it, basically. And once they, those flags get beyond a certain score, it gets flagged for manual review at Apple. Uh, so an individual at Apple will actually look at the image um, and see whether or not they need to make a report to um, the NCMEC, which I think is the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, in America, so that's that's where the report goes, uh, and there is a legal requirement in the U United States for companies when they find this kind of image to to report it. So okay. Apple's abiding by that. There is no requirement for them to go looking for it. Okay, but there is a requirement to report it if they find it. Um, 
this only works if you've got uh, backup to iCloud switched on on your phone. So if you don't have that switched on, your images will not be scanned. So I might be running ahead here of um, your chain of thought, apologies if I am, but um, is that not in itself a way to say if, if people are uh, concerned genuinely about their privacy as opposed to wanting wanting to hide something nefarious or, or you know, the actual you know, root cause of this, turn off iCloud photos and your privacy is, is insured? Yeah. I think there's there are other arguments to make here. So a lot of people are saying, and indeed Apple themselves are saying that they're doing this um, for altruistic motives. You know, they they want to protect children. Now, I'm I'm not disputing that. However, uh, if if it doesn't work unless you're uploading to iCloud, I would suggest that that is somewhat limited. Um, yeah. And yeah. bearing in mind that the host is increasingly in, in legal cases becoming responsible for the content that they host on their servers. Is this actually a case of, first of all, the primary motive is to make sure they're protected so that they're not hosting this material on their servers? I would say, based on, on the way the behavior works, yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. And as a business, you know, I'm, I'm sure that, that they find this as abhorrent as we do, but as a business, they're going to be. We, we know Apple looks at the business case first for anything, doesn't it? Mm. That seems to be their, their modus operandi. So, one of the articles that I looked at was talking about how other companies do this. Now, you need to understand that if you are on Android, uh, this is already happening. Anything that goes up to Google servers gets scanned. Facebook is scanning stuff. Everybody's doing it. Um, and uh, in in our in our industry, you know, use of images, you know, stock images where you haven't purchased the right to that has has been tracked for years. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, so tracking of images and tagging them, finding ways to say, you know, this image is a stock image or it has rights attached to it, uh, and then penalising those that use them without purchasing those rights has has been going around for a long time. So the fundamental technologies here are nothing particularly new. No, they're, they're not. And the, the old adage is always true. If you don't want people to see something, don't put it on the internet. Um, I'm, and I'm not suggesting that people should be, you know, I'm not saying it's okay to hide this kind of uh, content. Of course, I'm not saying that. Um, however, that that is the simple truth. Whatever you put up online, whether you're saving it to the cloud or, or anything, it's uh, it's available to be looked at by the people who own the servers, should they choose to do so. That doesn't mean that they choose to do so. No. I, there, there isn't somebody sat there at Google or Facebook or whatever trawling through all your photo library. Um, you know, these are algorithms and it's machine learning that goes through and does all of this stuff. Uh, I saw, I don't know how true this is, but I saw a, uh, a post where it said that last year Facebook made something like 20 million reports to the NCMEC, uh, which is horrendous, mm. first of all. Um, but Apple in the same period made about 260 or something like that. So some could argue that Apple have got some catching up to do. You could argue that, yeah. Hmm. And for those that are talking about privacy again, you know, I, I, I think Apple does genuinely care about privacy. Whether we trust them as the corporation they are, that's, that's up to each individual. But uh, a lot of what Apple is doing here is to preserve privacy. And that's why they're doing the processing on the phone and putting the hashes on the phone. Because here's what happens, right? You, you have a cloud server that does all this automatic scanning. Then you get a government agency come along going, ah, oh, we see you're doing this image matching on all your users' data. Well, here are some other images on other topics that we'd like you to search for. Yeah. And Apple has specifically said if they're asked to do that, they're not going to. And they believe that doing it the way they're doing it, where the scanning happens on phone and the hashes are part of the operating system and everything remains encrypted, uh, that to them is more more secure. Okay. So um, I've got a question for you. Yeah, go on. So if all that um, scanning and processing is happening on your phone for good you know, altruistic purposes, but what effect is that going to have on the performance of your phone? I don't think it will have a, a big effect at all because most people, uh, I'm sure that it will run as a, a, a process that uses idle time. Uh, obviously, there will be an effect if it's got to scan through your entire database of photos. 
But once that's done, it's only got to scan each new photo. Yeah, okay. So um, bear in mind as well the enormous performance. I mean, we've been talking about this with the, the M1 in the, the iPad Pro, and we're expecting A15 chips next month with new iPhones, aren't we? Yep. They, they'll have power to spare to, to cover all this off. Um, of course, I think the oldest, I could be wrong here, I think the oldest phone that will get iPad, uh, iOS 15 is the 6S. So some of the older ones, it might might have an impact or uh, impact on battery life, maybe. Excuse me. Yeah, uh, it may well do. Um, who kn who knows? I I don't know the answer to that. I mean, it shouldn't affect us anyway because we're not in the US, so it shouldn't happen for us. Hmm. Um, something though that I want to just pick out of this is, um, your data is not encrypted. Well, it is encrypted, but there's encryption and there's there's encryption. If you encrypt something, it should be that only you can decrypt it. But in this situation, it's clear that once the the software processes determine a match, which is supposedly a one in trillion, one in one trillion chance of a, being a false match. Yeah, that's important to say. Yeah. Uh, so you know, we've we've all got those pics of our kids in the bath and that sort of thing. It's, you know, we those aren't going to get flagged. So it's really important to state here that we're we're not talking here about. Uh, completely innocent images you may have of, of your children on the beach or something like that. What Apple are doing here is a collection of known CSAM images with a hash uh, is being compared to see if essentially a iPhone user has that same image stored on their phone. That's as I understand it. The that, yeah, that's it. So, so it, it's not looking at each picture and going, hmm, I think that might potentially be a CSAM candidate. It's actually going against known images that I guess are being distributed and law enforcement agencies already know about. Yeah, well, I think the hashes come from the NCMEC, so right. so they provide the those hashes. So, yeah, it's not using machine learning to, to check the image for nudity. I mean, those facilities exist, don't they, because the search engines have it on the image search. You can uh, filter out rude content. Um, so all of that exists, but that's not what Apple's doing. So, so even the software isn't looking at your image. Nobody's looking at your image. The only time that any image is going to get looked at is if the, the, the if it gets flagged for matching CSAM. And you'd have to be incredibly unlucky to get a false match. I mean, your image would have to be almost identical to one of these other images, which in which case is it really a false match i don't know uh, that's something again to be to be discussed the the point i was i was trying to make here though is that they as, can be decrypted they can be decrypted hmm. now i don't think that means that apple employees generally can go on the server and decrypt stuff i don't believe that for a moment um but it is possible to decrypt it and if it's possible to decrypt something then your security and your privacy is diminished yeah and if you take that out of this very specific and very laudable goal of protecting children, if you take it out of that for a minute and, and understand the principle that Apple can decrypt these things, that shows that the the privacy side of things isn't quite as tight as they've perhaps led us to believe. Is that fair to say? Um, possibly. I mean, I I think if you're putting something into the cloud, regardless of how well encrypted they say it is, reality is it probably can be decrypted um here's a, a completely different example but think about uh you know we as a company our, our web company we provide email hosting for clients yeah uh, i could go through a password reset and various other processes behind the scenes as an admin i could in theory gain access to anybody's email account i could do that but you wouldn't because you're a moral, decent person. Well, I would never even consider doing that. Someone once accused me of doing it. I was so disgusted. I wanted to throw up. It, you know, we'd, we'd just never do that because, A, it's illegal, B, it's immoral. And, you know, people just don't do that. Also, I don't have the time to sit reading other people's email. And it, this same thing applies. I'm not concerned about um, Apple you know, being able to decrypt my data because I don't have anything that You've got nothing to hide. But this uh, is... But it's still your private stuff, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. nothing to hide in terms of, you know, law enforcement or, or, or anything like that, but it's it's yours. You mm. know, it's pictures, of, I'm guessing, of your family, of your life. Mm. And, you know, the thought that 
I, I guess this is goes back a little bit to the analogy. It's almost like someone like the developer of your house coming in and just having a rifle through all your photos and your pictures and going, oh, who's this? Hmm. You know, it's just, it, it's icky. Yeah. Uh, that argument as well that it just doesn't stand up. I mean, I, I've seen these sort of con angry conversations going on on Twitter. The moment that, that someone's saying, oh, well, you know, this has wider privacy concerns, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, they get the response they're getting is, well, what have you got to hide? What have you got on your in your iCloud library? You know, this insinuation that they they must have a load of nefarious stuff stored in there, which is absolute nonsense. You know, you the the question about privacy is a, is a big one. What percentage of the people in the world are involved with viewing, sharing, creating these kind of images? Is that one would hope it's very small. You, you would hope that it's incredibly marginal. So what you've then got is that everybody else, the vast majority of people, are subjected to this kind of uh, treatment, if you like, this kind of guilty until proven innocent mm. uh, way of thinking because of that, the actions of the minority. And some, some have taken the view, well, I don't mind that because at the end of the day we want to stop this child abuse so i'm perfectly happy with with being in that position um and others think i'm, I'm happy about that i'm happy yeah. that, that that that's getting but at the same time i'm concerned about where we go next because this sets precedent and this is you know this is where polarization just in terms of being completely venti about something if that's the right word or enraged about something can can help you miss the finer points of something like, you, like we said at the beginning, anyone who's unhappy about this in terms of the goal is probably loony. But it is the wider implications. And that question about what have you got to hide? Well, in reality, nothing. But some of the, the images that we c keep on our phones are deeply personal, you know. And it's not that we've, we, want, we would want to hide them, but you wouldn't necessarily want someone going through your, your underwear drawer, would you? It, it's, a, it's a personal, private thing. So it's not that you're hiding something. It's just that you would expect a little bit of personal space. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and so you can understand why people make these arguments. Of course, the arguments are a little bit pointless because that's not what Apple is doing. <laughs> the, you know, when you research what they're doing technologically... They're not rifling through your drawers, are they? And it does make me feel that people sometimes have missed the point because of what you've just said, and they just want an argument, mm -hmm. which is, of course, primarily what the Internet's for these days, Yeah, which is a shame. It is. So um, I don't know whether we want to form an opinion on it. Um, I'm, I, don't, I don't really have an opinion either way, I don't think. I, I can see arguments from different sides, Um Ultimately, I don't think this diminishes privacy. Not with the way Apple's doing things, um, you know. And I, I think the concerns about where it could lead are perfectly valid, but we haven't been led there yet. You know, it, it it's one of those things. Yes, just because something could lead to something else doesn't mean it will. Um, the goal here, although as we've said, it there is a there is a kind of a limit to it because it only affects iCloud photos. But the goal of it is is a is a good one. Hmm. Um, whether you th you could take the cynical view, well, Apple are just covering their own backsides. Well, I, maybe they are, but the end result is hopefully this will protect those who are most vulnerable. So that's a good thing. And if suddenly this then opens up a can of worms, you deal with those worms at that time because that can is not yet opened. Right. Well, I think if you if you don't want you know if you want to be a completely private individual, you cannot have a smartphone. You cannot be on the internet. I mean, I. Uh, I've just started cycling again. I've got uh, an old Garmin computer that I've had for, I don't know, 10 years or something, but it's, you know, it still works, and I can still upload my data into the Garmin Connect app, which I do because it helps me to track progress. But it does mean that on Garmin server is a record. People, people know where you've been. And when I fired it up, I, having not used it for a few years because of my, you know, an injury that prevented me from riding, but... Um, I was amazed to see all my old stuff on there, all my old data, my weight data. You know, everything is on there. The Apple Watch is collecting this. It's on your iPhone or your Android or your your Fitbit. People are happily giving away their data. They're using maps. Um, you can you can be tracked wherever you go if you've got a smartphone. 
Well, as is often the case, you know, people say, how can Facebook be free? And of course, it's not free. Mm. Whenever something's free, chances are the, the product is you mm. and your data and what you're doing. And yeah, a lot of the time it's anonymized. So people will say, you know, people in our age group, because we are in the same age group, well, depending Ish. on which age, yeah. Um, yeah, they tend to do cycling or this. They may not say David does this or Pete does this, but um, it's it's often anonymized. But yeah, people know a lot about you. And I don't, there was a film, it was a long time ago now. I'll tell you how long ago it was. It had Gene Hackman in it, and he's, he retired 20 plus years ago called Enemy of the State. Yeah, I remember that. And uh, you, there's, that, that was actually quite a good insight because back then Gene Hackman's character was paranoid about the state knowing where he was. And at the time it was all satellite surveillance and drones and, and, and things like that, whereas, of course, now they don't need a satellite to track you. But, uh, uh, yeah, he was paranoid about that. So there's always going to be people who don't want to be tracked. And you, you do, you just have to live off grid if, that, if that's what you want. We live in a world where... If you go into town, chances are you're going to get caught on CCTV. That could be, you know, with machine learning and AI, your face can be recognized. So the notion that we have this privacy uh, that we'd like is not always there. But as you pointed out, there's not someone sitting there watching you unless there's a reason for you to be watched. Like, mm. you know, you, you've, you've hit some flags. And I, and I think a lot of people understand that. I suspect what they don't want is a false match that then allows someone to view something they shouldn't be able to view um yeah it's it's an interesting topic I, that film we yeah, it's the it's the moment where he blows everything up and it and will smith says to him why are you blowing everything up and he says because you made a phone call <laughs> that's right yeah and it yeah it is a bit like that we're, we're tracked everywhere we go um whether that data can be connected to us personally or not i don't know but I, the the interesting thing about it is that we're quite happy when it benefits us you know the garmin type thing that i was talking about earlier or Apple Watch, when it benefits us, we're less concerned about the privacy. Apple approaches this, obviously having given it a lot of consideration to do it in whatever is the best way that they can think of. Uh, and everybody's up in arms over it. You know, this is making the, the national press in, in this country, you know, it's, yeah. even though it doesn't apply to the UK. So people are concerned about it. Um, I, I don't know. What do you think, guys? Uh, probably... Um, be careful with putting too many opinions in YouTube comments, but uh, you know, let's let's try and keep it to the kind of technical thing. Does this set a yeah. really uh, a dangerous precedent for for privacy going forwards? Um, is it a great thing? Um, you know, what what do you think about it? Uh, I suspect I'll start thinking about it more seriously when it comes to the UK. But I, on the surface of it, I I don't have any of that kind of stuff on my phone, so I don't really have anything to worry about. No, exactly, maybe. exactly. Um, and I'm of the opinion that our privacy is degrading with every year that passes. So this doesn't really change that opinion. You know, there comes a point where you just won't have any privacy at all. No. Um, CCTV, you know, matching of faces. That uh, China's using that very aggressively uh, with CCTV and, and watching people and not just identifying people, but also looking at how they are behaving. Really? Yeah. Is this person walking too slowly? Or too quickly, you know? Are they suspicious? Wow! It, it is wow. quite, yeah. It is quite scary what's going on, and and the technology is there now to make it happen. I don't know if this is a new feature for iPad OS 15 because I've got the the beta installed on here. But I was in my photos the other day trying to find uh, my avatar picture somewhere deep in my photo library to upload to something, uh, and I noticed a search box, so I just searched my name. And all the pictures of me came up. No, that's been around for quite a while. That's that's, that's how I found found the picture that I've got in our notes. Oh, okay, right. Well, we'll share that later. <laughs> I think it's time to to move on to our other topic that we wanted to talk about, or that you wanted to talk about, I should say. So over to you, Pete. Well, yeah, I just wanted to talk about um, vaporware, which kind of almost leads us into the rumor mill because that's essentially what it is. It, it feels like. So I don't know if this is the right point to um, jingle it up. Oh, okay. Well, that, well, before we do that, just hang on, hang on a moment, because um, one of our esteemed listeners, James Duckett, thank you, James, has sent us through some graphics. Uh, so we'll pick one of those graphics. So uh, a logo for the rumor mill. I see he's been very influenced by your jingle last week, Pete, which seemed to <laughs> sort of degenerate into a Mario thing. It, it, it did, and uh, apologies for that. What what I've decided to do this week is not hum one. Okay. 
I'm I'm going to play one. Oh, well, okay. Well, just before you do that, I just want to say we'll put the graphic up. Um, thanks very much, James, for contributing. If anybody else would like to contribute and graphic, then by all means, um, send that in. Or indeed, if you've if you've got a, a good jingle, then um, not having to listen to Pete Hum or play something would be a kindness to me, I would say, uh, and indeed everybody. But go on, Pete. Let's let's do the rumor mill. I haven't. This is not prepared at all. I'm making it up as I go along, much like the rest of this podcast. The rumour mill. Oh, are we... The rumour mill. Oh, okay, that's better. I thought you were... Uh, it was almost almost a bit uh, reminiscent there, Pete, of the theme tune from the old show, The Computer Chronicles. Do you remember that? I do not remember that. It's an American show, so you have to look it up on YouTube, but it's okay. fantastic to indulge your retro computing thing, which I like to do sometimes. But some people will know what I'm talking about, Computer Chronicles. Yeah. Um, anyway... The rumour mill, right, go on then. So, vaporware. Right. Okay, I, there's a lot of this going on on Instagram, okay, mm. and it is basically the equivalent of rumour mills, um, or in actual fact, a lot of companies now announcing things that don't yet exist, like last week's topic. <laughs> you can't actually get a Google Pixel 6 yet. Um, and I, I see it a lot on Instagram, which of course, you know, in light of what we've just been talking about, is tuned to your interests. They know what floats your boat. Obviously, for me, for you, it's technology. Uh, so they, they tend to find things that are more appealing to you. And then it becomes even more frustrating when you find out, well, let, let, me, let me work through this with you. Okay. I have an amazing device, Dave, that really fits your needs and it looks gorgeous. And you're going to love it. You want it, don't you? Tell me more. Yeah. Well, here are the specs. That's good, isn't it? It does. How much? Well, it's going to be this much. Right. Well, that's okay. It's uh, That's a lot of money, Pete. Yeah, this but much. look at what it's going to do for you. Well, I mean, it ticks all these boxes, everything that you've been looking for in one neat little device. It's sold. I'll, I'll take one. Next day delivery, please. <laughs> oh, no. No, you can't have it tomorrow. Uh, uh, we, we haven't made it yet. But but you've shown me all the pictures and, and the stuff. Yeah, no, they're... They're just mock-ups, they're 3D models, but um, we will make it if you give us the money first. Honest. Yeah, that drives me up the wall. Yeah, and there's so much of it going on at the moment. And I just really wanted to just talk about it for a minute, because mm. it seems more and more people are conceiving of a product, nothing wrong with that, but almost marketing it as existing up until the point where you, you actually want want to get it and then you can't and i'm finding it frustrating yeah i don't i don't like it um it's something that exists in software particularly with gamings 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 Gamings. (laughs) that's the plural of gaming apparently Uh, yeah my brain just made it up um if you're doing the gamings on steam there are lots of early access titles right so you can and, and quite often these are the price of actual games yeah you know you're not you're not getting some kind of special discount in some cases um uh, one of my sons came to me the other day because he wanted to buy one of these early access games i think it was 15 or 20 pounds you know that's which is it's a it's it's a chunk of money well it is for for a 13 year old yeah and what what he's asking to buy is something that isn't a finished product it's just an early access game i've noticed a lot of these early access games never get out of early access they never get to the finished product or you end up waiting ages and ages and ages so that by the time it comes out, you've lost interest in it. Do you think it's a business model unto itself? Well, you tell me what you mean by that. Well, you know, do you have companies out there that say, okay, let's put together enough of a, a game that, you know, draws people in, we'll make a ton of cash off of that, and then we won't actually bother to deliver the final product? But by framing it as early act, you see, because with crowdfunding, as I understand it, with crowdfunding, if the product doesn't get to market, you get your money back. Do I understand that right? No. You don't? Not necessarily. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this whole thing, this whole thing is basically give us, give us money for something that may or may not ever transpire into real life. Yeah, which, which means that you're not spending money to buy a product. You're not 
this, this a traditional business transaction. You have something I want. I'll pay you what you want for it. And now it's mine. Yeah. Right. That is not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is the equivalent of... It's investment, isn't it? Yeah, it's Dragon's Den. It's, it's investment. I want you to invest in my product. Right. Okay, this is a different scenario. You want me to invest in your product. What are you going to give me in return? The product. No. That, that's not an investment. No. That's just me giving you money up front. Yeah. Um, an investment means I get the product and a share of the revenue, right? Well, that's what it should be. Mm. But it, 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 And this is why it winds me up so much is because you're essentially bankrolling the product. Mm. And, you know, I, there is a place. There is a place for research and development, particularly with, I think, software. Um, but part part of going into business is taking a risk, is it not? Mm. And what you're asking someone here to do is take away all the risk by funding your product. And if it all goes wrong just keeping that money or defraying it against your cost. But I, I think there's a, a a clear differential here because if you're talking about a startup, you've got a group of guys who want to start up and make a new product and there's been a few of those and I've actually supported a few of those yeah, things. Yeah, me too. Uh, because I like the idea of what they're producing. Um, and th that's one thing. Where I, I get irritated by this is that you've got large companies now, corporations with enormously deep pockets who are taking this approach instead of self-funding development. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the situation with the, the Steam Deck that we spoke about a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, you know, uh, Valve are making these things, they exist, but there's this pre-order process. Now, they haven't asked for people to spend all the money up front. It's just this £4 slash $5 for a space in the queue. Whether or not we get that back when we buy the product, I don't know. Valve hasn't explained that yet, as far as I'm aware. But it, you get companies that are doing that, but they're actually then asking for the full price up front. Yeah. And the companies then who do Indiegogo campaigns and get themselves, or Kickstarters, and they get themselves established, they make a product, and they're in business, and they're selling that product. But then when they make their next product, instead of they go back to Indiegogo again. Yeah. And, yeah, I, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, these things always, in my experience, overrun. Yeah. They always take longer than they're going to. Nothing's ever quite as it seems, um, particularly with the software. You know, there are occasions where stuff just never gets finished because the developers get fed up with it and move on to something else. Or they run out of money, I'm guessing. Well, that's it, because you're. Uh, it's a horrible thing that in, in business, you really don't want to be paid up front. You know, this has happened to us a few times, isn't it? You get, you get customers sometimes, and they, it's, oh, it's nearly the end of the tax year, so what we'd like to do is we'd like to, to give you a chunk of, chunk of change. Yeah, and then you've got this money in your account that, for work that you've not yet done. Accountants absolutely hate it, because technically there are tax implications to that. And... Uh, it's just demoralizing as well when you're working on this project and there's no payday at the end of it because you've already had the payday. Yeah. So it's a psychological thing because yeah. if you if you if you're sensible, you put that money into a place where you draw down on it incrementally. But psychologically, it is it's such a weird. There must be some kind of cognitive. There must be a psychiatrist out there that can tell us why our brains work that way. But mm. yeah. So that yeah that that is a. It's it's an interesting thing, vaporware, but I, yeah, it's a it's a plague. That's what I, it is. I was going to cite an example, but the, 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 that's the other thing: is these things appear, and that you get the impression that there's millions of people investing in this product, and they then disappear, and you can't find it again. So I found one the other day on Instagram, which I was really quite excited about, which is what got me thinking about this topic, and then I couldn't find it again. So um, yeah, not a winner. No. As a sideline to this. Mm. I, I can't bear all of the adverts on Instagram. They all have a specific style. And there's a, there's a channel on YouTube, Crazy Ken's uh, Tech Adventures. or yeah, I don't know if you ever watched Crazy Ken, but he's, uh, no. he's sort of moved into exposing all of these scam products, you know, like chargers. And there's another, there's another channel uh, that I have watched that does something similar in, amongst other things, Atomic Shrimp. Right. Uh, which is well worth a follow as well, including uh, his hot dog reviews. But uh, I'll let you go and find that. But all of these um, these scam products, they're sold on Instagram. So you get like a charger that you could go and buy on Alibaba for 
three pound or something and they they'll be knocking it up at 80 pounds and claiming all sorts of weird and wonderful fanciful things and of course you buy it and there's no comebacks there's no return policy there's nothing just total scams and we we all know what those videos look like it all it's all stock footage and you know it's always some bright spark wants to beat down the big corporates Oh, what a disgrace that everyone's being overcharged for iPhones. Therefore, I shall make a new iPhone that's amazing. And <laughs> I saw one for a, for a drone. So this this supposedly a, an engineer at DJI had left because he was so disgusted, so disgusted, Pete, at the prices that DJI were charging and ripping people off. So he went to make his own drone. And then Did he? throughout the video, you've got footage of this amazing drone, which is a DJI drone yeah. in the footage. <laughs> and then, then you get the pictures... And the responses in the comments section were of what people actually got sent, you know, which well, is something that you get from a, a, a pe petrol station for like five pounds or something. That's it. Yeah. If turds could fly, that's, that's yeah. kind of it. And, but Instagram slash Facebook, who own Instagram, uh, are happy to take the money from these crooks that are, are doing this stuff. It is something I, I think we have talked about doing this, and I, I wonder if it's something that you know we're looking at other interesting things to do with with the the constant geekery sphere. Whether whether we should order a few of these products and may, maybe make some videos around it, I think that might be quite entertaining. Perhaps we should with our rapier like. I was about to say wit, but that sounds think, slightly self-aggrandizing. Oh, that sounds slightly wrong as well. Probably. <clears throat> yeah, I have no wit. Uh, there is one other type of product as well that I've seen surfacing on, on Instagram, and these are nostalgia products where they get access to a brand name that meant something. Right. So uh, I'm going to just I'm just going to highlight the DeLorean watch company. <laughs> okay. Not this old drum again. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> well, the, there's this, this company that, that makes watches, that, and they've bought the, the rights to the DeLorean brand. Yep. So they they have a cheap watch that they slap a DeLorean logo on and then wax lyrical about how it's, you know, connected to not just DeLoreans, but the Back to the Future movie. And I'm thinking to myself, it's an analog watch, quartz, you know, it's a cheap quartz analog watch uh, with a DeLorean badge on it. And um, I don't remember Marty McFly wearing that. He wore a Casio calculator watch and... I do, do in fact have done I, a review on that on the channel. I, yeah, I, I just know you've got several probably. <laughs> uh, actually, Tom wears it. He he stole it and he's got it now. Do you know what I always wanted? I never actually got the opportunity to do it, but around about the same time as the calculator watch, Casio also did an infrared controller watch. Oh, yes. Do you remember that? Oh, yes. And I desperately wanted one so I could sit in the lounge. Back in the day when, you know, remote controls for telly were still fairly new and really wind up my siblings or my parents by changing the channel surreptitiously. They, they were amazing. I, I never could afford one, but I was absolutely mad on those kind of things. But one of my friends had one, and we did indeed have some fun in Dixon's on a Saturday morning with all the TVs <laughs> in the shop. Uh, just absolutely brilliant. They don't make tech like that anymore. No. I remember what it was now, the one I saw the other day. So it was this mechanical machined aluminium keyboard. Okay, that sits on top of your iPad or your iPhone or any other device because it's Bluetooth, but it's got a full mechanical keyboard, like a Cherry, hmm. yeah? And uh, it looked amazing. It was incredible. I am going to try and find it. But again, it was vaporware. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, put some money in here. We might make this. Hmm. So, um, but yeah, let's, let's, um, let's have some fun with it, shall we? Yes, perhaps. Yeah. Good. Anyway, that's vaporware. So, Are there any actual rumours this yeah, week? Yeah, I've got a rumour. This is from from someone called Alvin on Twitter, and he says, I heard that the next iPhone will have a display. A display? A display. Well, that's clearly nonsense then, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Where do you get these kind of fanciful things from? I don't know. I don't know. That's a, it tickled me anyway, so I liked the tweet, and I thought, <laughs> we'll include that in the rumour mill. Why not? Brilliant. It is getting that kind of ridiculousness, though. A lot of the rumours that you hear are... You know, that's a satire, isn't it? That that tweet of people who are making predictions that are so obvious. And, I, you know, we, we spoke about this in the yeah. last couple of rumour mills. People making obvious predictions. Yeah, it's, it's, I can predict that the next iPhone, and this is not even a rumour, I'm absolutely sure about this, will have slightly better glass than the previous one. Excellent. 
Would it be slightly harder? It will be, yes, yeah, slightly more yeah, redefined. Mm -hmm. And yet it will still crack when you drop it. Yeah, probably. Mm. Um, so there we go. I, I don't have any more rumours to share this week, but no. we, are, we are getting dangerously close to uh, the Apple iPhone event, which we would, would expect to happen normally around September time. Well, let's hope so. Uh, so we're expected to see new iPhones with A15 chip. It'd be interesting to see what Apple has done. I mean, it's difficult to imagine what they can do to make the phone much better. I, I think they probably completely redefined the iPhone experience again. Mm. Well, we've, we've, we've had a new design recently, which is a lot like the old design. I, I have to say I do like that. You've got the, the 12 there, haven't you? I'm still rocking. I think this is an 11. And I really, I think that's an iPhone 5-esque design with the slightly sort of more square edged yeah. re rather than the beveled and I, that was my favorite and i'm resisting getting one until the new ones are announced because i just you know we're so close now what what would be the point and then you're probably going to stitch me up by saying well you promised to have a, a, a pixel six you did i did so we'll we'll have to wait and see won't we well i think we should give you an android um i think that that needs to happen yeah, I'm, I am curious to do it as a video just to see, you know, the, the transfer because Google claimed to have sorted out iPhone to Android migration, which means, of course, I'll be transferring everything over to, to Google, Google and they'll, they'll take a copy of it all yeah. for themselves and uh, sell it off to the highest bidder. No, they probably don't do that. I'm but, just joking. But there is a serious point here, which is, uh, and I think this is one of the reasons why once you're in an ecosystem, you stay in it, is the notion of me transferring everything over to uh, Android is fine. But then back of my head, I'm thinking, well, I probably want to come back to iPhone just for, for various other reasons. I might be proved wrong. But you've then got to migrate it all back. And you think, well, what if something gets lost? You know, I have got photos of my kids from when they were little, um, which, you know, are memories. Particularly my wife really cherishes those because she struggles to remember stuff back then. So obviously, as they're so precious, you've been careful to back them up. Yes. Mm. Good. <laughs> you don't have seen very various cloud-based services. Excellent. Um, and maybe Look. that's something we should talk about is is your data safe in the cloud or uh, from a from a you know backup point of view not from a, what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, uh, I think if Microsoft or um, Apple want to read my data, they can carry on. It will probably send them to sleep. So it's well, nothing entertaining. I have to say your data does send me to sleep. Just being in your presence makes me snoozy. So uh, speaking of uh, being in presence of, uh, or not as the case may be, I understand that you're gallivanting off on a vacation next week. I, so I am indeed. That That does not bode well for the possibility of a podcast next week. I'm just going to put that out there. Yeah. I could do I could do a soliloquy from where I'm staying. You but could do that. Or I'm not going to. No, and um, switch off. I'm not going to attempt to to do one on my own again because that really sucked. Um, so, yeah. So nothing next week, folks. Are you back the following week? Could we be confident that we would have a podcast the, in two weeks today? Yes. Hmm. Okay. So there we go. So a bit of interruption to service, and there may be more yet through August and September because it is the kind of time where we do take a break. So uh, bear with us on that. I wonder, actually, I was thinking about this this morning. I'm going to say it on the podcast. You know, we've we've done how many episodes? Season one was actually only 11 episodes. Season two is standing rudely at 26. Do, do you know why that is, though? Go on. Because we started season one partway through a year. <laughs> did we? So they based on years? Well, that's what I did, yeah. Okay. I so, changed it to season two when we started again in January. Okay, so season two is 2021, basically. That, well, that it could be, or it might be that we take a break and then start a new season. But well, I, I think we should I was probably just putting it out there. We've we got this far into <laughs> into doing it. Um, there are lots of exciting things coming up, of course, because we're expecting new uh, Apple notebooks and stuff. Yeah. Um, so that'll be good. And uh, we're also talking about doing a, a collaboration with another YouTuber yes. as well. Yes. So we're going to be exactly. um, going to be having a chat and, later on. With and, and Netflix are also talking to us about you know maybe putting putting a series together, you know, like a you know, series on agency life and all that kind of, all the drama that goes on in, in agency life. The only drama that goes on in agency life is having to work with you, Pete. So well, I, think I don't think that's going to make good TV. No, probably not. 
No, um, it's not like we're restoring old cars or chopping down trees in, in the Canadian outback. No, I'm just speaking of restoring old cars, and this will be the last thing that we talk about because we, we do need to finish, but there's that Rust to Riches program on Netflix. And I, yes. I know that you, you have watched that in the past, Gotham Garage. Yeah. And uh, have you watched the new season? I haven't. I've seen it's out, but I haven't watched it yet. Okay. Well, when you watch the new season, what I want you to do is to pay careful attention to the finishing of the cars when they do the close-ups. And you will have to pause it because they'd like to rush over it. Yeah. But particularly the, the yellow bike at the end of the, the season. Okay. I'd be very interested to see what you think about that. I, I, I have my views, but I, I suspect I know what, what I'm going to find. But if you watch a lot of these these reality series, you can see that it's very careful editing to... Uh, to make it more dramatic and exciting. Mm. So maybe we could have some fun with that at some point. Mm. Anyway, that's probably enough for the, this week's podcast episode. Probably Thanks is. very much, everybody, for, for tuning in. Thanks in advance for all of your comments. I know we'll look forward to, to looking at those. Uh, don't forget to check out the main channel, um, youtube.com slash Constant Geekery. A couple of interesting videos in the last couple of weeks, which have got a lot of commenting going on. Go and join in in the discussions. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks two weeks on the Constant Geekery podcast. Cheerio.